An embedded system is a combination of hardware and software designed to perform a specific function within a larger system. Unlike your laptop or smartphone, which can run multiple programs, an embedded system is built to do just one or a few dedicated tasks and do them extremely well. For example, the microcontroller inside your microwave controls heating time and power level. The chip in your car's airbag system detects impact and deploys the airbag in milliseconds. Even your smartwatch uses embedded systems to track your heartbeat and steps. Embedded systems can be found everywhere, in medical devices, industrial machines, home appliances, drones, and even satellites. They make our world more efficient, automated, and intelligent. So, an embedded system is just the application of computers to perform a specific task. It is also shocking to know that your PC is made up of embedded systems, despite the fact that it is not an embedded system itself. The mouse, keyboard, and monitor you use with it are all embedded systems because they make use of tiny computer chips to perform specific tasks in these peripheral devices. These systems usually consist of hardware, like microcontrollers, sensors, and actuators, software, a small program stored in memory that tells the hardware what to do. That brings us to the main discussion of today, microcontrollers. Those tiny computer chips are called microcontrollers and are made up of microprocessors, memory, and other peripherals to enable it run custom software in order to perform a specific task. Although some embedded systems use microprocessors and external memory, most embedded systems use microcontrollers. The microprocessor, alongside memory and peripherals, are integrated into one chip. We then use other components to give input to the microcontroller, and the microcontroller processes these signals in order to drive output devices. Microcontrollers can be classified based on different features they possess, some of which are 1. Based on the memory architecture. There are two types of microcontrollers under this category, the Harvard architecture and the von Neumann architecture. The Harvard architecture stores instructions in the flash and data in RAM and uses a separate bus to access them, while the von Neumann architecture stores instructions and data in RAM and accesses them through the same bus. We covered all the types of memory that can be found in a microcontroller in our previous video, and we made mention of the flash and RAM memory, and sure to check it out. 2. Microcontrollers can also be classified based on instruction set. This depends on the CPU architecture. There are basically two types in this category. Reduced Instruction Set Computers, RISC. These microcontrollers have CPUs that use a reduced set of instructions. That is, the instructions that the CPU uses are in a step-by-step -step format like load, move, etc. Examples of microcontrollers in this category are AVR, ARM, and PIC. Complex instruction set computers, CISC. These microcontroller CPUs use a complex set of instructions in which multiple operations are packed in one instruction for the CPU to perform. Examples of such microcontrollers include Intel 8051, Zlog Z8, Motorola 68HC11, and older PIC series. We also classify microcontrollers based on bit width. Bit sizes vary across microcontrollers. For example, the popular ATmega32 used on Arduino boards is 8-bit, while STM32 microcontrollers are 32-bit. Another classification is based on manufacturers. Microchip, which produces PIC microcontrollers. Microchip, which also produces AVR microcontrollers. ST Electronics, which produces the ARM-based STM32 microcontrollers and other 8-bit microcontrollers. Let us now see the microcontroller structure. We earlier stated that the microcontroller is a single chip that has a microprocessor, memory, 
and other peripherals to enable it run custom software in order to perform a specific task. We will now briefly introduce some of these peripherals as we will cover them in detail soon, so ensure to subscribe. 1. Central Processing Unit, CPU. Function. The brain of the microcontroller. It fetches, decodes, and executes instructions stored in memory. It also controls and coordinates the operation of all peripherals. 2. Memory Units Microcontrollers usually have two main types of memory. A. Program Memory ROM or Flash Stores the program code, also called firmware, that the CPU executes. It is non-volatile, meaning data remains even when power is off. B. Data memory, SRAM, temporarily stores variables, stack, and data during program execution. It is volatile, meaning data is lost when power goes off. C, EEPROM, if present, used to store small amounts of data that must be saved even when power is off, for example, calibration data or settings. 3. Clock and Timer Module Function. Generates timing signals for synchronization. It is also used to measure time intervals, create delays, and generate periodic interrupts. 4. Input and Output Ports. GPIO. General Purpose Input or Output. Function. Provide pins for digital input or output operations. Example. Reading a button as an input or lighting an LED as an output. 5. Analog to Digital Converter, ADC. Function. Converts analog signals, such as sensor outputs, into digital values that the CPU can process. Example, reading temperature or light sensors. 6. Digital to Analog Converter, DAC. Optional in some MCUs. Function. Converts digital data from the CPU into analog voltage or current. Example, generating audio or control signals. 7. Communication interfaces. Used for data exchange between the microcontroller and other devices. UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. Serial communication with PCs or modules. SPI. Serial Peripheral Interface High-Speed Data Exchange with Sensors, Memory Chips, and Similar Components I2C Inter-Integrated Circuit Two-Wire Communication with Multiple Devices on the Same Bus CAN, USB, or Ethernet Optional Used in Automotive or More Complex Systems 8. Interrupt Controller Function Manages and prioritizes interrupt requests from peripherals, such as timers, I.O. pins, or communication modules. It allows the CPU to respond quickly to important events. 9. Power Management Unit Function. Regulates power supply and supports sleep or low power modes to save energy. Some also include internal voltage regulators or brownout detectors. 10. Watchdog Timer Function. A safety feature that resets the microcontroller if the program hangs or goes into an infinite loop. 11. Bus System Function. Acts as internal communication highways connecting the CPU, memory, and peripherals. The main types are the data bus, address bus, and control bus. That will be all for today. In subsequent videos, we will see how each of these peripherals interact with each other and with software to function as a full embedded system. So ensure to subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos.